Yeah. So FTX, a large crypto exchange or a crypto casino, as I like to call them, uh, evidently had taken some pretty large directional bets, uh, potentially with user funds, and also had relied on the value of their own printed out of thin air token, FTT. Check out the latest news in the crypto space. Learn and educate yourselves. There are so many tools and resources available, so many creators and channels giving you the latest news and information, all for free. To not take advantage of this information would be a slow death and ultimate entrapment within this fiat, credit based, banking system we are subject to. There is a reason this system does not work. Begin your journey to Bitcoin and learn why Bitcoin is hope. Show. All right, this is a very special impromptu episode of Coin Stories, where I'm joined by the CEO of Swan, which I'm so proud to be partnered with, Corey Clipston, who's been calling out these scams and uh, and fraudulent companies for a while now. So, Corey, thanks for joining me. Yeah, it's good to be here. Uh, interesting circumstances, for sure. Yes. Okay. So I want to start out, I want to go into the backstory of what happened with FTX and Binance, but first, just out of curiosity with all the craziness happening right now, especially on Twitter, as this news develops, summarize this for me in like a sentence or two, what's happening? Yeah. So FTX, a large crypto exchange or a crypto casino, as I like to call them, uh, evidently had taken some pretty large directional bets uh potentially with user funds and also had relied on the value of their own printed out of thin air token ftt which was you know supposedly used kind of like uh, the bnb coin at binance for discounted trading fees mm -hmm. uh but they actually had more than the circulating market cap of ftt on their balance sheet um which is something that's possible because there wasn't, you know, it was 3 billion circulating and 8 billion total and they had like 3.6 on their balance sheet. Anyway, once it became clear because of a leak that somebody sent their balance sheet, sent Alameda's balance sheet over to Alameda's, the sort of partner mm -hmm. firm, it's a separate entity, but it's very unclear where the division is between the hedge fund slash market maker Alameda. It's a prop trading desk, basically. And FTX, that's SBF's company, right? That's SPF. These are Sam Bankman Fried's yeah. two companies, right? Alameda and then Alameda spun out FTX and started this exchange. Uh, it just became very clear that their finances were much more precarious than previously thought. And they were largely dependent on people believing that these large piles of worthless altcoins were worth something. And as soon as traders started to sniff that out and could see the weakness and that, you know, essentially the emperor had no clothes and mm -hmm. this purported genius of crypto, the JP Morgan of saving these CFI lenders or whatever, it basically yeah. caused everyone to rethink the last six months completely. And like I had always been saying, the only reason this guy is trying to rescue these things is because he's cross collateralized with yeah. them and he needs them not to go under or he will go under. That's what I've been telling people since June. And it seems very clear that's exactly what's been going on. Yeah. Well, okay. So let's dig into it a little bit because FTX sort of looked like the big dog and the king when BlockFi was having issues and Voyager. Now, all of a sudden, Binance needs to step in and rescue FTX. So can you kind of um, lay out the history in simple terms for people that maybe are in the space investing, but also for people that are looking into crypto and wondering if this is a safe place to, to actually invest in Bitcoin finally? Yeah, great place to invest in Bitcoin. Awful time to invest in crypto. Crypto is for trading. It's a it's a worse than zero sum casino. Um, but yeah, buying Bitcoin is always a good idea. Um, just don't buy it from one of those crypto casinos where <laughs> and if you do, withdraw it immediately to self custody and don't leave it there. Um, so Binance has been around since 2017. Um Binance actually seeded, provided the seed money for FTX and was one of the one of the interested parties that helped FTX get off the ground. Um, one of the reasons, you know, secondhand information, but supposedly the reason that they kind of brought this to Sam and the Alameda team and said, we'd like you guys to start an exchange. 
and we'll give you all this money to do it is because Binance was uh, forecasting that they would have a lot more trouble in the US with regulations. Wow. Um, and so this is when you saw the creation of Binance US, which has like much fewer coins and sort yeah. of less volume and things like that. And Binance International is sort of, you know, this homeless entity. Nobody can figure out what jurisdiction they're in and they kind of just operate in the shadows, but they're huge. Um, so FTX was supposed to be this, you know, a US entrepreneur that's based here kind of, but then they ended up going to the Bahamas <laughs> for the international. And then they ended up having to start FTX US separately anyway. And so I think what I understand is there was kind of a plan for the the crypto movers and shakers types that they initially hoped that FTX could be kind of the venue for the US, but then it ended up being kind of a carbon copy of Binance with the with the separate US entity the same way that Binance has. Wow. And so they okay, so they developed a token, right? FTT. And then yep. separately, he also has this Alameda research company. So mm -hmm. how did this turn into, you know, a new contagion? So when people know your positions and they sniff out weakness and there's no one on the bid, there's no one that wants to buy this stuff essentially except for you. Like the only company that the price of FTT matters to is, is FT, FTX and Alameda. And there's no natural demand for this stuff, you know, so... Let's say that somebody ran uh, an analysis saying like, you know, at trading volumes that assume like a mix of bull and bear markets, there might be something like $300 million of annual demand for FTT because of the discounted trading fees. And assuming a velocity of money of, you know, call it like, let's say something tiny, like 3X. So the same FTT token only gets spent three times a year. So that'd be like, you would need about $100 million of supply but they had pumped this thing up to, you know, over a $3 billion market cap and $8 billion fully diluted market cap. So, you know, at minimum, the thing is ADX overvalued. And you were sort of calling this out earlier, right? You were watching the price of the FTT token and, and letting people know just as you have with previous companies. Yeah. I mean, I've been, I've been poking at this, you know, scam bankster fraud myth. That's what I like to call them. Uh, Sam Bakeman Freed myth, this whole mythology since the collapse of Celsius uh, and this whole BS around him being a white knight coming to save crypto, it always was apparently like very clearly self-serving from the get-go. And so I was talking about that on TV shows, Yahoo Finance and Coindesk TV and CNBC and stuff back in June and explaining this. And I've kind of stayed on it ever since. And then last week, the editorial team at Coindesk, somebody passed them the Alameda balance sheet. Mm -hmm. uh, one of their editors got in touch with me to help them analyze the balance sheet, which I did. So I did that last week, spent about an hour with them just kind of explaining what I saw there. Uh, they put out their story and uh, you know, the rest is history. As soon as CZ smelled blood and said, oh, I happen to have this $580 million worth of FTT on my balance sheet. And all I have to do is tell people I'm going to sell it. And I can completely tank FTX's business and take them to zero. Uh, he went ahead and played that card. Wasn't Binance already talking about buying FTX? Like, do you think this could have been, I don't know, a strategy where they were trying to get it for for a, a lower price? Or is this more of, um, you know, the, the big concern is the fact that they are so leveraged and they have to come in and really bail them out because otherwise Binance is going to have issues as well. Yeah, well such short memories we have uh it's probably 10 days ago that sam bankman fried was uh talking about buying coinbase so you want to talk about hubris before the fall that's crazy yeah <laughs> yeah i mean that 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 might have been last week that might have been monday or tuesday last week but it definitely wasn't more than a week and a half ago we're going to take a quick break from the show to hear these messages from my sponsors. First up, I trust capital. Do you save in Bitcoin for your retirement in your IRA? I trust capital allows you to invest in Bitcoin and other digital assets with the tax benefits of an IRA. And unlike the stock market, you can buy and sell 24 hours a day. Instead of paying taxes on Bitcoin gains every year, you can defer taxes using an I trust crypto IRA or with an iTrust Capital Roth IRA, you can withdraw tax-free at retirement. iTrust recently hit a milestone of $6 billion in total transactions across the platform, and that's $6 billion in tax-advantaged accounts that those 
87,000 new IRS agents can't do anything about. The iTrust Capital platform is easy to use and only takes a few minutes to set up. And if you want to start investing with a $100 bonus, head to itrust.capital slash Natalie Brunel. Next up, let's talk about Bitcoin 2023. That is the biggest Bitcoin conference in the world. And take a look at the video from last year in Miami. It was an incredible event that was jam-packed with the best speaking sessions, workshops, and networking events that I've been to in the space. I had the chance to live anchor the Bitcoin Magazine News Desk and serve as MC. And it was such a full circle moment for me to be at that conference because the first one I attended was Bitcoin 2021 in Miami. Miami, and that's where I actually launched the Coin Stories podcast. I went on a media pass because I used to be a reporter, and I actually went backstage and started asking the speakers, like Michael Saylor and Preston Pish, if they would come on my show. And they did. And a year later, I'm back at the conference as someone who actually has a career now in Bitcoin. So you never know what can happen at these events. I highly recommend going so you can meet other people that share the same values and passion for Bitcoin. And if you want your ticket at a 10% discount, head to b.tc slash conference and use the code HODL, H-O-D-L. I'll see you there. I mean, that that, that might have been last week. That might have been Monday or Tuesday last week, but it definitely wasn't more than a week and a half ago. I mean, um, this could create monopolies, don't you think? I mean, Binance acquiring FTX, these they're they're becoming fewer, and they're all still so leveraged and fragile. At the end of the day, if you really look at the at the underlying, you know, pipe pipes, um, it, it seems like yeah. we're only going to have a couple of big crypto exchanges. That's not good. I mean, Coinbase doesn't have a token. Right, so it's just an exchange, and it's it's doing what a casino operator should do if they're just you know trying to make money like you've got just take your rake call it a day book the profits um binance i they say they're going to do proof of reserves mm -hmm. I, i've never seen anything to indicate that binance rehypothecates user funds and uses them for taking one-way directional bets or lending them out to market makers or whatever it is that FTX is doing. Mm -hmm. It looks like the hole in the FTX balance sheet is five to $6 billion. That's the last I'm seeing on Twitter. That's what they're shopping for. They're trying to get it by noon Pacific. So they've got about 38 minutes as we talk right now to get five or $6 billion supposedly. Wow. Um, again, this is secondhand. Info I mean, once, that I'm once the ship is Twitter. taking on, yeah, once the ship is taking on that much water, what are you going to do? It's sinking. So, yeah. So, so as far as consolidation, yeah. I mean, you've going to, are you going to have Binance owning Voyager and BlockFi and FTX because those deals go through? Exactly. Do you just, now that this has happened and FTX is not, I mean, it was only Sam Bankman-Fried trying to save his company that made him do the deals with Voyager and BlockFi in the first place. Mm -hmm. So now it makes a lot more sense to just let them die. Mm -hmm. So I would guess, that's my guess is that any sort of FTX or Binance slash FTX deal for Voyager or BlockFi probably just puts those uh, in the much, much less likely to happen category. For those who haven't been following this, can you kind of summarize what the Alameda books looked like? And, you know, I know that people are sharing on Twitter right now the fact that Binance can pull out if they want to. So what does this acquisition period look like? Because it's still all up in the air, right? Yeah. I mean, I think the, you know, the simplest one was, I think, the the headline tweet that ended up getting repeated everywhere, which was just, you know, they had like six billion of retained equity or net equity essentially, and an FTT token pile at Alameda of 3.6 billion. And so the point was, you know, the majority of the retained equity in this supposed genius prop trading shop is this printed out of thin air token from their sister company. And that so, doesn't look very good. So are in terms of like, who's affected by this, is the customer money on FTX okay for now, but then the investors in FTX are the ones getting killed or, or who's really impacted the most right now? So this is my best understanding of what I'm seeing come across the feed. As you know, <laughs> I yeah, was hosting a big dinner in. for global Swan team last night right. in Los Angeles. And then, you know, not much time this morning to catch up on things, but, um, but I have been up since five 30 kind of mm -hmm. reading and, and figuring out what I see. Uh, 
I think it looks really obvious by the fact that they even have this liquidity crisis. They've actually been using users' funds to do things, to trade, to lend out, to put in other places. And they thought they were so smart that they could manage the risk. Um, so yeah, I think that deposits are at risk. And I think that's the whole point of them selling to Binance is they're counting on Binance to come and make everybody whole. What do you uh, think happens to SBF with this whole process? I mean, my my main point in going after the guy for the last, what is it, November, I guess the last five months, six months, was just don't believe it. You know, this guy is not an altruist. Like that whole that whole ethos, sort of left coast, 60s, 70s liberal ethos of, you know, okay, if you're gonna be in capitalism, you know, just because you want to give it away, that was supposedly his thing. That doesn't mean you can screw people over and scam them to get the money. That's just robbery. And I think that's the business that he's been in this whole time. And, you know, so I just never believed it. I never believed he was actually all that smart. I think, you know, it's one thing to be good at math. It's another thing to actually make good decisions, especially when situations are dynamic and, you know, you're under duress and you have to make decisions quickly. Um, and I think that's kind of what we saw is like, you know, it, it, <laughs> there's this movie uh, called Fresh about a uh, chess that came out in the early nineties. It was uh, Samuel L. Jackson was like the estranged father of this kid who was kind of like a little chess prodigy. And Samuel L. Jackson had been uh, basically like an incredible speed chess player when he was uh, younger. And he would say like, I don't care. I don't care anymore. Take Bobby Fischer, take Kasparov. I don't care. Put the clock on him. And I think that's what you see. Like these guys that can make, you know, great moves with lots of time to crunch the data and spend their time with it. You put the clock on them, you get in a dynamic market situation. All of a sudden the animal spirits are attacking you and everybody's hunting your positions because they know exactly which tokens yeah. you have because they have your balance sheet. And they've also yeah. seen all the things that you've pumped and dumped in the past, like Solana and maps yeah. and serum and all these things. Like everybody knows the big one way directional bets so they just had to short each of those and they would assume that other people would pile into the trade and then it has its own momentum. And that's what I talk about when I talk about a Lehman moment. It's not Lehman, yeah. what happened to the rest of the banking industry. It's yeah. what happened to Lehman and just the fact that people knew what was on their book and they knew that Lehman would be forced to sell mm -hmm. at a reduced price and that you could just short the crap out of anything that they owned. So this happened to long-term capital management in 1998 as well, right? Their correlate, the correlation of all their products, everything that they owned and everything they had on their book mm -hmm. goes to one because people know their positions or thinks that they know their positions. And I think that's just what happened with FTX. Like everybody said, oh, they're in trouble. I can make money shorting literally anything that they own. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's that crypto contagion effect with all the dominoes and it can happen very quickly. People thought it was over. It's been a couple of months. Bitcoin's been holding up. Okay. We're still in this bear market, yep. but people thought it was over. And now, and now what, which one comes next? What do you think? Uh, what do you think's the next one that's going to fall? I mean, we know, again, this is, this is kind of about who's fragile and, you know, this, and that doesn't mean that they're going down for sure. It just means that their businesses are doomed to fail at some point because, you know, it's just they're, they're, they're turkeys and they think they're getting fatter and fatter and happier and happier until Thanksgiving. And then they get their head chopped off. Mm -hmm. But, you know, other ridiculously fragile businesses out there include crypto.com. Mm -hmm. The chance of them actually, you know, sponsoring the LA arena here where I live for the next 10 years is zero, it will never happen. They will not be around to see to see their name on that stadium for the next 10 years yeah where's the uh, ftx arena wasn't there an ftx arena that's too? miami that's miami, miami. Okay. also i tweeted back then wow. like you guys are going to be incredibly embarrassed this is a joke like you're wow. just all going to have egg on your faces and that goes for tom brady and matt damon and all these all these guys their agents really need to wake up and stop putting them in crypto scams um We've okay. tried. I've I'm gone to the I'm agencies to... and explained. Like yeah. I've I've told their digital groups, like you're gonna have egg on your face. You're gonna look yeah. like shit. I know we're both we're both trying. We're here in LA. We're trying with these Hollywood folks, but they <laughs> they love the glitter of the the other stuff right now. Well, um, th these these casinos can pay them. That's what it comes down to. Yeah, that's um, right. And then that's obviously right. Nexo, Nexo obviously is the same junk. You know, Crypto.com and Nexo are both run by sort of like gray market scammy online marketers is all their sort of past careers. And, you know, they're all rehypothecating re and doing super risky things. And so it's just a matter of time for both of those uh, businesses. They're the same thing as like Celsius, basically.
You mentioned uh, proof of reserves before. I know some people are tweeting about it right now. Is that what needs to happen in order to prevent something like this? Or how do we prevent this from, from you know, continuing? Yeah, I mean, if, if Binance, I mean, first of all, I don't, I don't have an inclination or I don't have an indication, I should say, that Binance is rehypothecating user deposits in the first place. Like, I don't know that they're lending stuff out at all. You know, FTX had FTX Earn, which they, you know, put uh, out last year or whatever, and they were offering like five to 8% on user deposits. That's exactly what Celsius was doing. Right. Right. And then they're doing all these weird lockups, like saying you can't, oh, I think that, so you, <laughs> I, I tweeted this out yesterday because somebody sent me the screenshot. They wanted to withdraw or sell their, their FTT and they either had to wait 14 days or pay a 10% penalty. So people yesterday that had been, you know, doing the just long anything that Sam does, yeah. this has been like yeah. an, a dominant theme for a couple of years now is like anything that Sam's in, he's smarter than everybody. He and Vitalik are the geniuses, like just long anything that Sam Bankman fried is involved in. And that's been like a, a trading strategy for people. And so they're stuck with these big piles of FTT tokens and they had to decide yesterday do they believe the, you know, the fudsters, those Bitcoiners, those mean maximalists saying, get your coins off, just take the 10% hit, bro. Like whatever, at least you'll have your money. Mm -hmm. uh, or do you trust Sam? And uh, as we all know, don't trust scam bankman fraud. We're going to take another quick break to hear these messages from my sponsors. First up, Fold. Fold is the best Bitcoin rewards debit card and shopping app in the world. You can earn Bitcoin on everything you purchase from Amazon to your groceries with Fold's Bitcoin cashback debit card and win free Satoshis every day or even a whole Bitcoin by spinning the daily wheel and the purchase rewards wheels. I actually have an alarm set every single day so that I never miss out on spinning the daily wheel and earning free sats. And, you know, I have to say that Fold is one of the best ways to get someone completely new into Bitcoin because they can start earning it and learning about it and using it. So if you want to sign up and join the fun, head to foldapp.com slash Natalie for 5,000 in free sats. All right. Now I want to tell you about a company called CrowdHealth, which is a Bitcoin enabled alternative to health insurance, because let's be honest. Health insurance sucks. The government and insurance companies have jacked up prices. They've made things super complex. And when you send your money in, it essentially goes into the health insurance black hole and then you never see it again, even if you don't get sick and you don't need medical services because, you know, you don't eat fiat foods. But then if you actually do get sick or you need care, you have to send them more money because something ends up not being covered. The great news is there's now an alternative brought to you by Bitcoiners, and it is called CrowdHealth. It is very different from insurance. Instead of sending your hard-earned money to an insurance company, you hold your money in an account that CrowdHealth helps you set up. And you can even convert the dollars in your account to Bitcoin. Now, the company is all about community. Remember, it's called crowd health. So when someone in the community is in need, needs care, needs help, you can choose to actually use the money in your account to help them, or you can keep it in your account. And if you ever leave crowd health, you can take the money that's left with you. If you want to learn more and sign up, you can head to joincrowdhealth.com slash Natalie. Now back to the show. Don't trust scam bankman fraud. Wow. Don't you think that this whole thing is really a good thing in the sense that the only place that I see free markets actually functioning is in crypto where the fires are allowed to burn and you see, you know, who is able to survive and which companies are actually viable and there's no bailout. There's no big mama bear from the fed coming in. And this is what should have probably happened in 08, 09. We would have, you know, probably been able to recover the economy in the long term in a healthier way, as opposed to propping up these businesses that should have never been propped up. And again, no one's going to come in and save them. They have to save themselves essentially. Yeah. I mean, if you're, if you're limiting that conversation to financial services, I think that's probably a, a good, a good um, comparison. Obviously, there are plenty of industries that are allowed to have participants fail left and right with no intervention. Restaurants come to mind. Mm -hmm. 
All right. So what's the big takeaway? What do you want people to know? Because there are a lot of people who probably are new or maybe not super far down the rabbit hole. And a lot of people started with altcoins, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone starts somewhere, learns about it, and then hopefully moves into the the full Bitcoin maxi position. But um, people are in different different places, trusting companies based on, you know, maybe something they saw with, uh, what's his name um, on uh, crypto.com, Matt Damon, yeah, or Tom Brady. And now here we are, and the price of Bitcoin is now in the 17,000 range. So um, what's the big takeaway? Yeah, I mean, I think in general, the best advice that you hear from the best investors throughout the ages is buy what you know. And so don't get caught up in shiny objects just because some celebrity or some, you know, someone with media attention made you think that that was a shiny object that you should just just go grab some, uh, spend the time to actually understand what it is that you own. Um, we often say in the Bitcoin space, you know, the more, you know, the more you buy or things like, you know, you earn the right to own more Bitcoin because you, you really can't hold on to it. You'll sell it. You'll get scared with the volatility or the FUD or, whatever, if you don't really understand what you own. Um, So spend more time watching Natalie's show. (laughs) Read Jan Pritzker's book, Inventing Bitcoin, which you can grab for free at swan.com slash free book and and put in the time to really learn about Bitcoin, understand why Bitcoin, not crypto. The entire crypto blockchain DeFi industry is all just a marketing scam. Web3 is not real. The inventor of the freaking World Wide Web put out an article this week uh, explaining that Web3 